This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy sci-fi film called What Planet Are You From? Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On a planet four solar systems away from Earth, a highly intelligent species of men intend to dominate the universe. Since they reproduce by cloning, they have lost their reproductive organs and discarded their emotions. Despite the lack of reproductive organs, they intend to conquer Earth from within by breeding with women. To prepare for the takeover, Graydon, the leader, subjects them to a crash course to learn about the planet and its female inhabitants. In one of the seminars, a computer program advises them to repeat the phrase, uh-huh, when a woman speaks to them to make her feel like they're listening. During a simulation with a hologram, a man is able to make the woman agree to copulate with him within 10 seconds. He is soon chosen to go to Earth and given the name Harold Anderson, because Graydon thinks he has the best chance to impregnate a woman. Harold soon heads to Earth after being equipped with genitalia. As a commercial plane heads to the airport in Arizona, the pilots spot an object approaching them on the radar. They try to evade the object, but balls of light soon hit the plane and cause strong turbulence that knocks the passengers from their seats. In the bathroom, Graydon reminds Harold of his mission and instructs him to avoid telling the truth to anyone. After Graydon flushes himself out through the toilet, Harold comes out of the bathroom and starts greeting the female passengers, who are still shaken up by the turbulence. He immediately tries to flirt with a stewardess named Rebecca, but she threatens to report him if he doesn't return to his seat. Harold soon finds an empty seat and attempts to make a move on the woman next to him, but he learns that she has a husband. When they land, an FAA employee named Roland Jones arrives to investigate the turbulence. His colleague, Randy, hints that there are extraordinary circumstances behind the turbulence, but Roland is skeptical. Roland asserts that the disturbance is probably caused by a flock of geese or a weather balloon. As the passengers get off the plane, Harold makes advances at Rebecca again, but he ends up getting slapped. In the airport, Harold comes across a woman soliciting money, so he engages her in a conversation. The woman accidentally drops her container, so she bends over to pick it up. As Harold stares at the woman's butt, his member starts buzzing when he gets aroused. Later, Harold goes to a bank for a job interview. As soon as he steps inside, Perry Gordon introduces himself and hints that they'll be working together if he gets accepted. Harold spots the alluring bank manager, Rita, walking by, but Perry tells him that he's too late because he's dating her. Harold asks Perry to take him to a night spot to find a woman, but the boss, Don Fisk, soon calls Harold to his office for the interview. Fisk is instantly impressed with Harold's knowledge of his banking. When Harold asks Fisk about Rita, Fisk claims she's with him, and he takes her to his condo in Scottsdale every weekend. After welcoming Harold to the company, Fisk warns him about Perry, noting that he always chases women and never does his job. Roland continues investigating the turbulence in the plane in his office. While watching a video taken by one of the passengers, he is astonished to see a strange light flashing through the plane's window. That evening, Perry takes Harold to a nightclub. Harold hooks up with a waitress, but she wants him to use protection while making love. He tries putting it on, but it snaps out of his hand. The next day, Harold tells Perry that his time with the waitress was disastrous, so he asks him to take him to another spot. That evening, they end up in an AA meeting where Perry intends to pick up women who get emotional during the testimonials. A woman named Susan grabs Harold's attention when she shares her personal story on stage. Susan discloses that she became an alcoholic because her father and succeeding stepfathers had drinking problems. In high school, she started dating musicians who told her she was a lot of fun when she was drunk. She only decided to stop drinking when she hit rock bottom one morning and woke up not knowing where she was. After the meeting, Susan and Harold notice each other, but Harold doesn't get a chance to talk to her because she's with other AA members. Suddenly, Rebecca approaches Harold and reminds him that they met on the plane. Rebecca notes that she's attending meetings because she developed a drinking habit in her job. As Susan is about to drive off, Perry crashes into her car and damages her fender. Susan asks for his insurance information and threatens to hunt him down if he doesn't pay for the damage. Meanwhile, Rebecca takes Harold home and tries to make love with him, but she loses interest when she gets a call from her married lover. The next morning, Roland ignores the breakfast prepared by his wife, Nadine. 
so he can head straight to work. Nadine suspects that he might be having an affair because he's too eager to get to the office, but Roland explains that he's excited because he finally encountered something that stumped him at his job. Later that day, a captivating woman named Helen enters the bank and goes straight to Perry's office. Since Perry is not inside, Harold approaches her and asks her what she needs. Helen introduces herself as Perry's wife and walks off to continue looking for her husband. Moments later, Susan enters the bank to give the estimate of her car's damage to Perry. When Harold approaches her, Susan recognizes him from the AA meeting. Susan asks him how long he's been in the AA program, so Harold explains that he just went there with Perry. When Susan learns that Perry is not in the program either, she surmises that they just go to the meetings to pick up women. Women. Soon, Perry arrives with Helen, so Susan hands over the estimate and tells Perry to drive more carefully when he returns to an AA meeting. Helen suspects Perry of having an affair, but she becomes sympathetic to him after learning that he went to AA. Helen notes that she will make sure that he never has another drink for the rest of his life because she loves him so much. When Harold invites Susan to dinner, she initially declines, but she gets intrigued by his weird behavior, so she agrees to meet with him later that night. During dinner, Susan reveals that she became a real estate agent after abandoning her job in a music store. She then asks Harold about his mission in life, so he discloses that he is on earth to have a child. Susan becomes fascinated with him because she has never met a man who wants to have children. She notes that she wants to have kids too, but she's afraid that she might not raise them well. After the date, Susan takes Harold to her house. A while later, Harold tries to make love to her, but Susan tells him that she decided not to get intimate until she gets married, because it's part of the process of changing her life. Soon, Harold meets with Graydon on a plane to report that the woman he's been pursuing wants to get married. Harold notes that he's not trained for marriage, but Graydon instructs him to do it anyway so they can proceed with the takeover. Meanwhile, Roland interviews Rebecca to ask if she saw anything unusual before the disturbance on the plane. Rebecca notes that one man started hitting on her and acted like nothing was happening. Rebecca reveals that she doesn't recall seeing him before the disturbance, but she dated a man and heard something humming in his pants while they were in bed. When Rebecca discloses his name, Roland checks it on the computer and learns it's not on the flight's manifest. When Susan visits Harold at the bank, he immediately asks her to marry him. Susan is taken aback by the proposal, so she tells him that she has to think about it. That evening, Susan goes to dinner with her friends to ask for their advice. Allison and Madeline think that it's a bad idea, but Liz argues that Susan should get married if that's what she wants. Susan realizes that her biological clock is ticking, so she calls Harold when she gets home and tells him that she wants to get married. Soon, Harold and Susan go to Las Vegas to get married. After the short ceremony, Harold and Susan spend the night and the next day copulating. After 21 hours of lovemaking, Harold still doesn't want to stop, but Susan is tired so they go outside to enjoy the sights in Vegas. After about a week, Perry submits Harold's third quarter report to Fisk and takes credit for it to present himself as a viable candidate for vice president. When Harold arrives at the office, he notes his report on Fisk's desk, but he doesn't say anything. Suddenly, Rita calls Harold's attention to let him know that Roland is looking for him. In Harold's office, Roland questions him about the turbulent flight. When he doesn't learn anything new, he shows him a Playboy magazine to listen for the buzzing sound in his pants. Harold gets aroused by the pictures, so he uses the electric pencil sharpener to mask the noise from his member. At home, Harold starts to get anxious because Susan is still not pregnant. Susan gets upset because she feels like she won't have any value to Harold if she doesn't bear him a child. She asks Harold to comfort her, but he gets aroused while embracing her. Harold soon meets Graydon on the plane and complains about his wife and his buzzing member. Graydon advises him to find another woman who can get pregnant and promises to have someone fix his member. While Harold drinks at the bar one night, Helen approaches him and starts flirting with him. They end up making love in her house, but Harold's member suddenly shuts down for some reason. Unbeknownst to Harold, Roland followed him to Helen's home. While Harold tries to get his member up in the bathroom, Roland goes to the window and snaps a picture of him. When Harold comes home that night, Susan sings him a cheerful song and congratulates him for getting her pregnant. The next morning, Harold goes to the office and tells Fisk that he's interested in the vice president position. So Fisk reveals that he's choosing between him and Perry. 
One day, Nadine finds Harold's pictures and accuses Roland of having an affair with a man. Roland explains that the man in the picture is an alien he's been tracking, but Nadine refuses to believe him. She decides to leave Roland despite his assurance that he's not cheating on her. While Harold is watching a football game one day, Susan approaches him to complain that he's been distant since she got pregnant. Harold contends that she's just hormonal and grabs the remote to turn up the volume on the TV. Susan gets upset and breaks the remote by throwing it against the wall. Harold immediately prepares to buy a new one, but Susan notes that they have plans to buy a crib. Frustrated by Harold's lack of concern, she sarcastically tells him to buy a new remote and forget about the baby. Unable to detect sarcasm, Harold goes ahead and leaves the house to get a remote. When Harold takes Susan to a doctor for a checkup, the doctor is alarmed because the fetus appears to be 5 months old when she's only 6 weeks pregnant. Susan gets worried, but Harold assures her that she'll be fine because the doctor also notes that the baby is perfectly healthy. Harold goes to work one day and learns that Perry was promoted to vice president. When Perry enters his office, Harold expresses his frustration that he got the promotion by taking credit for his work while fooling around with Rita during office hours. Perry responds by disclosing that he knows Harold slept with Helen. When Perry starts insulting Susan, Harold gets furious and hits him in the face. That night, Harold tells Susan what happened at the office and expresses his regret for hitting Perry. Harold thinks he's bleeding when tears start flowing from his eyes, but Susan points out that he's crying. While Susan is showing a house to prospective buyers one day, Harold suddenly arrives and tells her that they should buy it for themselves. While the interested couple argues outside, Harold and Susan go in and start planning what to do with the house. Soon after moving into their new home, Susan starts feeling contractions, so Harold hurriedly drives her to the hospital. Despite being pregnant only for three months, Susan gives birth to a healthy baby boy. As Harold holds the baby in his hands, he sees Graydon waiting outside the delivery room. Later, Harold tells Susan that he has to leave and won't be coming back. Susan gets enraged and tells him to go, thinking that he is scared of raising the baby. Roland and a team of FAA agents track Harold down to the hospital, but Harold has already left when they reach the delivery room. When the team arrives at the airport, Roland discovers that Howard is getting on a plane, so he boards the same flight and secretly observes him. Harold gets into the bathroom, so Roland tries to follow him, but a passenger blocks the aisle. Suddenly, a bright light appears outside the plane, followed by turbulence, so Roland hurries to the bathroom but finds no one inside. Back at the hospital, the doctor gives Susan a sedative to calm her down before proceeding to tell her that her baby is missing. After reporting that Harold got away, Roland gets fired from his job. Roland explains that he saw Harold go into the bathroom, but he disappeared when he opened the door. His superiors think he's flipped, so they encourage him to rest and enjoy his time off. When Harold returns to his planet, he starts training the men how to deal with women based on his experience. The hologram they now use looks like Susan, and the dialogue is similar to the arguments Harold had with her. Harold explains to the students that life on Earth is full of conflict, but it's not necessarily bad because people learn more about themselves during that time. When Harold starts expressing his doubts about conquering Earth, two men drag him to Graydon's office. On the way, Harold sees his baby in a chamber. Harold denounces Graydon for taking his baby and questions him whether they really need to invade Earth. Graydon sends Harold to the purification center to erase his memories about Earth, but Harold manages to escape and retrieve his baby. Several guards arrive to apprehend him as he tries to get on a ship. However, they refrain from approaching when they hear the infant crying. They all run away when the baby urinates on one of the guards. Soon, Harold returns to Earth and takes the baby back to Susan. When Susan starts berating him, Harold discloses that he's an alien tasked with impregnating a woman. Susan doesn't believe him, so Harold proves it by shooting light from his nostrils. Susan is shocked and disappointed with herself because she married an alien. Harold tells Susan that he can't give her what she wants because he doesn't know what love is. He asks for her forgiveness before leaving the house. Outside, Harold finds Roland waiting for him, but Roland notes that he won't arrest him because he's been fired. He only wants Harold to show the light from his nose to Nadine so he can reconcile with her. Harold agrees, but Graydon shows up with a weapon to take Harold back to their planet. Roland pulls out a gun, but Graydon claims it won't do him any good because his highly evolved brain will heal his injury. 
When Roland shoots him in the chest, Graydon dies and falls into the fountain. Moments later, Susan comes out to resolve matters with Harold. Roland asks Harold for Graydon's body so he can show it as proof of alien presence on Earth. After Roland leaves, Susan tells Harold that she doesn't know what love is either, but she surmises that everything Harold did for her was his way of showing his love. Soon, Susan and Harold renew their marriage vows in a church. Their guests include Roland and his wife, as well as the men from Harold's planet. Near the end of the ceremony, the whole room is suddenly filled with buzzing noise as the alien men watch Harold and Susan kiss. On the way home, Harold tells Susan that the aliens have appointed him as their new leader. Susan notes that she's honored, but Harold reveals that they'll have to live on his planet. Susan points out that her friends are on Earth and she knows nothing of his planet, so Harold deduces that he'll have to commute to lead his people. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.